Eat my greens, nutrition. You ain't on my vibe, then I don't gotta listen. Working out, sleeping in, taking vitamins. Vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C. Ooh. Vitamin D, vitamin bitch, vitamin please. Ooh. Hi, it's Joel Blackstock, and you're listening to the Taproot Therapy Podcast. Um, I'm here today with uh, Corey Rasmussen and Jared Hardy of the Hardy Nutritional Company. And I've seen their products do some pretty amazing things with different people. Um, these aren't people who approached me and told me that, you know, they had a product and they wanted to partner or something. And they're also not anybody who's advertising I'd ever encountered. Um, what happened was, you know, we're a treatment resistant, um, clinic and complex PTSD clinic. And we work with people that have been in a lot of different kinds of therapy. A lot of times dopamine disorders, especially, um, you can deal with the trauma that is fueling the genetic expression of, you know, the gene causing the dopamine disorder, but you're always going to have a little bit of a dopamine disorder, you know, schizophrenia or, um, bipolar disorder or, um, OCD are, you know, hard to treat with it without medication, but also if you've got a very treatment resistant, um, form of a condition, a lot of times you got to play with the medication all the time, you know, stress can make it not work as well and trauma therapy helps, but we heard from multiple patients independently that they had tried all these different things and they were having good luck with Hardy. Um, and so I was interested and I looked it up and, you know, unlike a lot of the fad stuff that is kind of pseudoscientific out there, um, cause a lot of people, you know, have a critique of psychopharmacology, uh, and a lot of the systems that we use in this country that aren't great. Um, but they use it to push a product that is also a scam. You know, you can have a very good, uh, takedown of the system or you can have a very good critique and then still be pushing something that is fraudulent or, um, unhelpful. And, um, the hardy stuff, you know, there was no like, Oh, our secret ingredient that works for everybody is, you know, hornet venom from China or, you know, on the mountainside of Tibet, there's a rare blue flower that will cure, you know, there wasn't any of that kind of, um, <clears throat> marketing. It was just that they were talking about bioavailability and how, you know, um, chelation, they have one of the most advanced chelation processes in the world, which is how you make the vitamin, um, be available to the body. If the, if it holds on too tight, um, then you pass it and you don't get it in your system. And if it doesn't hold it at all, then it will break down in the container. So a lot of things that are labeled to contain a vitamin that you take doesn't really mean that you absorb that vitamin. And they use micronutrition, you know, with um, different time release things. There's a lot of science in it, but they weren't reinventing the wheel. They were just saying that we are actually uh, taking lots of steps. You know, our product is expensive and it's because it's built to make these things available to the body when and where they need them during this digestive process. And, you know, because it wasn't some secret ingredient or, you know, kind of going back to the drawing board and saying, you know, I was interested and I looked more at the science of it. So I wanted to have those guys on today to talk uh, about their product. Um, you can order it from their website. You know, one day I would like, you know, our uh, clinic is started with just me and now we have some other therapists that do other things. And we now have the QEG brain mapping and neurostimulation. But the goal was to collect all of this brain-based medicine, you know, a myofascial release practitioner, someone who could do gut health and nutrition, um, and have all these people together so that we could start to build the future protocols that we're going to need to treat trauma um, and change the kind of things that we want to change. And um, so being able to uh, collaborate with them is helpful uh, and having, you know, the QEG brain mapping, being able to learn, you know, what what's working where and, you know, do you, what order do you need certain kinds of treatment? I mean, that's all part of the stuff and part of the reason why we want to do all of this stuff in the same building and collaborate with each other instead of, you know, just referring to providers that talk once or twice. Um, and I hope one day Hardy will be part of that, that we can, you know, have a, a supplement program or something. We don't now. Um, so I don't have any business affiliation with them. They did send me some free samples in the mail after the, the podcast. So I appreciate that. Um, you know, full disclosure, I got some free things. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I use their stuff. I think it's very helpful and I uh, wanted to make it available to more people just because I'd heard success stories from patients. So I'll go ahead and roll that interview and I appreciate you listening. Thank you so much. And it, it is is great to have the added synergy effect, uh, effects, plural, really, of what you're doing. Um, from our experience, it really is a, a, an important addition. Um, we're doing a nutrient synergy. Mm -hmm. uh, we're trying to be as complete as we can and to optimize that uh, 
and it works well for the majority of people. Many people also benefit from individualized treatment in mm -hmm. addition, things like N acetylcysteine added mm -hmm. what we're doing. It, it, it's been shown to break down biofilms mm -hmm. of organisms in the gut, and that can be very useful, make antibiotics more effective. Um, make antimicrobials more effective, uh, antifungals, for example. And we see a lot of people with gut health issues. So mm -hmm. those we, we work with a lot of different practitioners uh, specialized in gut health, specialized in psychiatry, of course. Uh, we need medical doctors to help people come off medications mm -hmm. because that's essential. When we add the nutrients, they need to come off the medications eventually the optimal dose of medication is zero mm -hmm. in ma the majority of cases. That's true of thyroid hormone as well. Mm -hmm. in our and you're talking about medical things where you can get the body to make what it needs. Like, you know, and yes. acetylcysteine is a precursor for glutathione. That's um, right. And so that, you know, having a universal antioxidant uh, at the peak capacity that your liver can hold is useful because, you know, if you're at least in America, you're probably going to encounter a poison somewhere. You know, so going ahead and, and you can't take glutathione orally, you just pass it. You can inject it, which is kind of arduous and expensive. But if you take the ingredients your body needs to make it, then you're always running at the highest level of having that. And when you encounter high cholesterol or, you you know, you get the triple baconate or whatever, um, you know, you, you breathe in, you know, fumes in the city or something. I mean, you're just better prepared to be able to handle that um, without liver inflammation and, and a lot of other things. Um, right. I think it helps yeah, with neuroplasticity, so too. Exactly. So our focus is on providing the body with all of the raw materials that it can't make on its own. We, we need those essential nutrients in optimal amounts. And in some cases, it varies from person to person by genetics. So we provide a foundation which works for most people in for many different mental health conditions. We have extensive research right now with ADHD uh, in adults and children showing that nutrients are very effective for attention, uh, to restore uh, optimal attention for people. Um, but in addition to that, the studies have looked at the clinical global impression in these trials for children and adults. And it's very effective for mood and anxiety components of the ADHD, and that matches our experience in the other publications that have happened, uh, dozens of publications, in fact, not all of them blinded. We're just getting into the realm where researchers are starting to do blinded trials. Mm -hmm. um, so we have those things like a randomized controlled trial we do here. Is that what you mean by blinded? Just yes, a randomized controlled trial. So they randomize individuals to uh, different groups. Some receive our daily essential nutrients. Uh, treatment mm -hmm. and others receive a placebo. Do you make blends for specific conditions yet? Have you ever thought of that? I mean, the daily, you make like a, you know, kind of a general micronutrient vitamin. Do you make specific yes. things for um, different issues? In a way, it turns out that we do. Uh, we, we don't have specific, uh, well, we, we, we have additional products that we add mm -hmm. as needed. And so we're creating our own blend by adding yeah. more relevant products. So um, inositol, for example, is very yeah. useful to take the edge off anxiety. Do you combine that with choline, the inositol? Uh, with choline, yes. Mm -hmm. Choline is excellent for racing thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, if individuals a, a have... big reduction in obsession. Uh, yes, yeah. obsessions, racing thoughts. Yeah, the... The inositol is excellent for physical symptoms of anxiety. Mm -hmm. And there's good research for it on its own in psychiatry. Uh, but in synergy with other nutrients, it seems that we don't need as much. You, you do anything and with L-theanine? L-theanine? Yeah. Sorry. Yes, in some cases that is very useful as an add-on. I was just curious. I mean, not that you should. And I, I, those are some that we have seen like a lot of yes. good effect with, with treatment resistant mood disorders. Yes. Yeah. It, it can be very useful. And that is part of our uh, clinical reference for mm -hmm. health practitioners. Uh, we've compiled from experience with clinicians and patients over the years 
what seems to be most effective in mm-hmm. different situations. And with anxiety, L-theanine, it can be very useful. So we have a protocol there um, to add. It, it's, it can be different for different people. It needs to be optimized for dosage for different people, of course. Mm-hmm. But we start with the base of the essential nutrients and we add from there. So depending on the individual situation, mm-hmm. uh, some of those add-ons can be very useful and important. Do you, do you uh, could you speak briefly about um, some of the newer advancements and um, I mean newer as in you know twenty years and some of these, but some of the newer information that we have about one bioavailability, two taking precursors to get something that you want instead of just yep. eating the thing that you want, and then three um, synergistic. The, the the two things by themselves have an effect or no effect, but combining them gives you none of the individual effects and a completely new one because there's a combination. You know, a lot of this stuff needs to be thought more of like baking soda and vinegar. You know, it's not that, um, you know, if you drink baking soda and vinegar, you have a total, if you eat a handful of baking soda and taste what that's like, and then you drink vinegar and you taste what that's like, that's nothing like mixing them together and drinking the thing that's just the water and salt left behind. I mean, there's a reaction. Um, And, you know, obviously your liver um, metabolism and gut health is a little bit different than that. But, you know, a lot of the things that are not quite yet commercialized or not all the research is even available yet is saying, you know, if you seed the gut with the right thing, you know, because the, the gut is one of the only other places, or the only other place other than our brain that has neurons. I mean, we have an enteric nervous system, which not a lot of people yeah. know. So there's, and it's talking directly, you know, to the, your, the body brain. They Go say ahead. your gut is your second brain. And yeah. we know from experience that you have to have a healthy gut in order for the nutrients to uptake appropriately. As mm-hmm. a matter of fact, if your gut is unhealthy, if you don't have the proper microbiome there, you can feed that nutrients and actually create more of a problem. It just feeds mm-hmm. off of that stuff. So yeah. it's different than a medication. A medication gets into your bloodstream pretty quick. We're talking yeah. about an ecosystem, which I think is harder for people to understand you yeah. know, than yeah. a pill. Yeah. yeah you and harder to The study. microbiome yeah. is a you're, synergy effect. The more complicated your treatment, the more pushback you're going to get from research, you know, for because it, you can't turn it into a number. You know, if I eat Wellbutrin, I know exactly what that does to a neurotransmitter in 90% of people. If I'm saying, okay, what if the gut, this bacteria goes into the gut and then it takes root and then we rule out the people where it didn't actually respond to that and, and then you feed that bacteria this combination of thing and then that produces uh, an, a desirable byproduct, I mean, that's a lot bigger and harder of a study. Man, I got to get my PhD. Yeah. Yes, so as long as we can fit everything into one capsule, we can do a study. Mm -hmm. And it's not much different than studying food Mm -hmm. because food contains many factors. Mm -hmm. And it's the synergy of those factors that keep us healthy. You know, if if we're eating well, um, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's really not a stretch, but the reality on the ground is uh, research grants, for example, for so many years, so for, for decades and, and say the last century, uh, you know, there, there's been an explosion of science, but it's been one factor at a time. It's been researched. By Which doesn't time. measure through two or three things working together. I mean, that's why to get these protocols, yeah. the biggest breakthroughs in mental health have not been when somebody came out with a new antipsychotic because antipsychotics are very expensive to research. So it's like, Yes. These these pharmaceutical companies, I'm trying to, you know, give general listeners a little bit of industry information about the assumptions you guys are acting on, you know, so that yes. they understand this. But, like, the, it's very easy to create a new statin, which is a cholesterol medication. That's why we have, like, 20 that we don't need because they're all about the same. Because you just play with a sugar molecule until you get it to be slightly different. I bonded this here. Now I can patent it. It's a new thing. And so you, you fudge some research that says, hey, this one's slightly better for your liver than all the other statins because statins are not great for your liver. And then, um, you, you know, two or three years into it, they do some more trials and realize that actually it's about the same as a tortoisette and all the ones that we already had. But by then it's generic anyway, so you don't care. Um, and you get to advertise that to every like old guy that's sitting in front of the TV, you know, screaming at the news and like eating fried chicken. So like you make a bunch of money making a drug that we don't need. What we really need is antibiotics and antipsychotics because we have germ resistant bacteria and we have mental health conditions that are very hard to treat. You know, um, the majority of the people that I see uh, for bipolar disorder um, that is treatment resistant and extremely genetic, you know, like it's been on, they've been on 
all of these different combinations of meds forever. The symptoms are never going to quite go away. We got rid of the trauma that was underneath the genetic expression. But the yep. genetic expression, even without the trauma, is still very high. And that's where Hardy comes in and has been very helpful. Um, and so there's a huge resistance to researching these things. And when you're, you're, it's been pretty recent that they've started to research how things work together. And the biggest breakthrough yes. in antipsychotics, which is come back to where I started, is not that they came out with a new pill. I wish they did that. They need to do that. I'm not saying that's a bad thing to do. If you ever get one, it's going to be where there's some kind of socialized sector of research like in Switzerland. But the the biggest breakthroughs have been when they discovered that when you take a mood stabilizer, an antidepressant, an antidepressant and an antipsychotic, and you combine them, that there is a synergistic effect where they behave totally differently and it's able to stabilize a, a, con a condition. Sometimes because you have a paradoxical reaction where you can't get any more anxious, so then it pushes you back to your baseline. Sometimes where there's a combination in the brain that we don't really understand. But it's been combinations of medication that have become the bigger break of these in mental health, not a new discovery. We need new discoveries and we should fund those. Um, and there's like a lot of corruption issues there that drive me nuts. But um, that this combining these things is very hard to study, which is why it took mainstream medicine so long to do it. And you guys are kind of on the frontier of doing this in a, in a new way that yes. I think research is not going to validate for a while because there's nothing in it for them, not because it isn't evidence-based. Yes. It, it's certainly not nearly the lucrative opportunity that patentable medications are. That's mm -hmm. for sure. But we have researchers independent of our company who have done these blinded trials. And they do it because they care mm -hmm. about solving the issues, the real issues at hand. And, and it's, it's not the uh, quick get rich way. For well, the that's like the, the clinical psychology students, because it's never a clinical psychologist. It's always a clinical psychology student that just took their one-on-one class and has decided, yeah. I don't know what research is, you know, 10 years into my thing. It's like, I've run randomized controlled trials too, dude. I'm not bad at reading research. I just know if I can replicate something in the room over and over again, then, then that's the thing to follow. But it's like, they'll send you an email being like, well, this isn't 15 years old yet. I don't know if you knew that. Like, yeah, correct. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Well, we've, you know, we've been doing the nutrient treatments and we call them treatments because they, they replace psychiatric treatments, <laughs> you know, they, they're more effective, fewer side effects. And I think sometimes antidepressants and antipsychotics, antidepressants and anti-anxiety anti drugs and anti-stimulants um, uh, for ADHD. I mean, I, I definitely think yeah. you can get there with nutrition where I'm really careful to talk about going off medication, even though I'm not a pill pusher, but I also am not right. totally anti-psychiatry. Right. You know, schizophrenia and, and upset, dopamine disorders, schizophrenia, obsessive compulsive um, and bipolar disorder, you can lower your baseline some of the time, you know, but the odds that you're never going to need to be on that medication ever again, I think research really, you know, a lot of people get really angry with me because I can't tell them I can, oh, you can look at light and color and I'll do the pointer and we'll do somatic experiencing. You'll just never have schizophrenia again. That's just not how it works. Right. And right. a psychotic break is so damaging to your to your brain and to your you know practical reality that I just want to make clear that when you're talking about that, you're talking about, you know, addictive medication or medication that could be better treated with therapy and health. You know, it's yes. not, not in every condition, you know, you're not saying that you can, you know, hundred percent cure cancer that you can remove that because so, I you know, it's a mental right. health podcast. A lot of people say that. So I just want to qualify what you're saying. Right. Y yes. Thank you. It, it's, it's psychiatric medications we're talking about mm -hmm. and we can only remove the psychiatric medications in so far as the nutrients are effective in replacing the action of those medications. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's not the same in every case, mm -hmm. but in the majority of cases, certainly we've seen it with bipolar disorder. Yeah. It looks very much like a, a treatment. Psychiatrists mm -hmm. use it that way. They, they, at least we could we could choose different words and say that mm -hmm. people can manage the rest of their life without symptoms <laughs> by using nutrients alone. That's what we see, mm -hmm. and it, it's people can replace uh, mood stabilizer medications with mood stabilizing nutrients, which are what nature intended for mm -hmm. mood stabilization uh you know to to regulate anxiety and well and with childhood with, with childhood issues everything's off label anyway if you've tried the two or three that are approved to be you know treatment resistant bipolar in children 
whatever you're being prescribed is not approved for what they're prescribing for anyway. They have to prescribe off label because there's not yeah. anything there. Why not try the nutrition? You know, it's right. amazing, Joel. Um, most of the people, I'd say 80 percent of the people that come to us are on a medication, an antidepressant, antipsychotic, or were just recently on one. So the principle that Jared's talking about, uh, we, we've learned, it's actually a false positive. So this is what happens if a doctor is not involved and they just go to the internet, find our product, and they're on two or three medications, let's throw Effexor in there, Abilify, yeah. well, Butrin, and they start taking our product. They're going to feel okay, maybe a little bit of a placebo, I'm excited to try something different, right? Uh, mm -hmm. First week, second week, into the third week, they start feeling uh, groggy and all these symptoms and the brain fog and maybe the electric shocks at the back of the neck. And they're like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. Well, the only thing I changed is I started taking this expensive vitamin mineral supplement. So they stopped taking it and the electric mm -hmm. shocks go away and they start thinking a little bit. Like, huh, yeah. it must have been that stuff. But what is actually happening is if they went to the Internet drugs.com rxlist.com mm -hmm. even google and they type in effects or over medication side effects they're mm -hmm. going to find all those things that they're experiencing and you so talk about what, of dyskinesia and so what's like, happening what shocks? Is, yeah the body is actually producing all the element the things that it needs for uh serotonin uh, mm -hmm. to occur properly and it'd be like giving a, a person that doesn't need medication that medication what are they yeah. going to feel they feel over medicated and so it's an indication that they need to start titrating off slowly. Some of those meds, man, mm -hmm. you, you can't just drop them. You have to yeah. go by one sixteenth, one eighth, you know. And we've learned that over the years. Our our group has had to learn that. And mm -hmm. uh, when someone comes to you and they're on fifteen medications, but which one do you which one do you work with first? Uh, we we know if uh, if you're giving them the nutrients that their body needs, their mind, their synapses are going to start firing appropriately. I just want mm -hmm. to share the screen just for a moment, just to uh, to, to kind of demonstrate. And this is well thought, uh, well laid out in science. This is a tryptophan metabolism okay. or serotonin and, synth synthesis. So you keep in mind, some people are going to be on the audio. So um, if you can, you know, just kind of qualify what you're talking about too. The visual is always nice to have for the for the video. Sure. Uh, there's a group of medications called SSRIs. They're selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors so they're a medication that affects the serotonin pathways they don't actually make any more they just sort of stop you from getting rid of what you've already made to keep you know a, sure. a higher level in the brain which can also cause some some issues and i mean i'm on an ssri like i'm not anti i yeah. i just always am afraid of sounding like alex jones i mean this stuff is science it's not uh sure but you can see here just in this pathway we got riboflavin vitamin b6 iron uh, we've got phosphorus in there, mm -hmm. uh, zinc. You know, there's a there's a potassium. These are things that are that are needed in these pathways in order mm -hmm. to produce the, uh, tryptophan or serotonin in the proper way. When you don't have those things in your body to the proper levels, mm -hmm. you, you're gonna, these are going to suffer. So medications, in that sense, can come in and um, and help that. But what happens when you're giving your body all that it needs, it's going to start, it's like a map, right? Your body just mm -hmm. needs ingredients to follow the map. And once it, it's not fast, uh, vitamins and minerals do not happen quick, you know, quickly. But once it starts taking effect and you've still got a chemical in there, a medication in there, there's, there's a contra, you know, you, you've got to choose one or the other, um, I don't know if I'm explaining that very well, Jared. Um, yes, it, this is a critical concept, and I appreciate you delving into this, Corey, because this is so critical to what we do. Uh, what we try to do there with with all of these medication interaction effects we've dealt with is we work directly with clinicians. We leave the medications as much as possible mm -hmm. squarely on the shoulders of the experts uh, who are you know trained to manage medications we need to train them about the interaction effects occurring between nutrients and medications corey delved into a pharmacodynamic interaction effect mm -hmm. that is as the nutrients act in the body to change the underlying issues of the condition, the medication is needed less and less. Mm -hmm. The body doesn't need as much manipulation. Mm -hmm. 
when the underlying issues are solved. And so we see that with many so the blend changes the idea of just a daily multivitamin that works for 100 percent of the people 100 percent of the time no matter what's happening is it's kind of a, a misnomer no and we're not claiming that's happening for yeah. sure you no know, i it's, mean what you're saying is you know when i'm the first day on trying to change lifestyle and doing micronutrition once i restart some of these metabolic pathways or, or build back up precursors i mean I'm, I'm a lot of different things i'm oversimplifying it but that you're going to need something different a month in than you're going to need seven months in, which yes. makes sense to me, you know, more so than yes. it works for everything all the time. Yes. And it's, so we need to replete individuals who need to be repleted of nutrients uh, to, for functions to work optimally. And these nutrients are needed in every cell of the body there and, and they work together mm -hmm. naturally. So the synergistic effect of all of the essential nutrients, we're talking about all of the vitamins, all of the essential minerals, mm -hmm. uh, uh, omega fatty acids, mm -hmm. and amino acids. We supply all of those. Um, the products are produced and, and distributed in the United States mm -hmm. uh, with very high quality ingredients. The, you, you talked about bioavailability. You can delve into that a little bit. And synergistic effects. I, I'd like to speak to those. Um, the bioavailability is, is evidenced in results. Yeah. That's what we focus on. So the, the blinded trials, independent of us, this is, none of these are paid for by our company. Mm -hmm. The researchers are arm's length. They have independent funding. Um, they just publish what they find. Mm -hmm. And it does not show that everyone is miraculously well. Mm -hmm. uh, but the longer people take it with, with the blinded trials and the follow-ups from the blinded trials, number one, it's safe. Uh, there's, there are no side effect differences. Yeah. Compared You're to not build tolerance That's to unheard of with any psychiatric medication. It, it's, it's a night and day difference in terms of side effects. And for that reason alone, many parents and individuals just prefer it hands down. Mm -hmm. uh, the stability is greater than what medications can offer. Actually, over time, we don't need to find a new treatment because the old one stopped working as it was before. And that's a common thing in psychiatric or pharmacologic treatment. Mm -hmm. You know, it needs careful management and the, you know, the nutrients help people manage uh, eventually on their own. They just, they just take nutrients and, you know, there are factors in their lives like sleep and, you know, managing stress and so on. They're always relevant. Mm -hmm. You know, th those are always important diet. Those are synergistic effects. Mm -hmm. um, but when we have a foundation of nutrients, those things are much easier to manage. Uh, people can shop for healthy foods, prepare them, you know, they, they can get out of bed um, to do this. Um, so um, it's, it's really critical uh, to uh, have the synergy that we need. Um, you, excuse me for a second here. My sure. well, battery is running low. <laughs> a lot of what you were showing on that diagram and what you guys are talking about is you know the the newer um not just nutrition but you know all medications now they're doing this for psychoactive medications and to try and see um how genetic testing could inform you know what you're prescribed um but the is the idea of metabolic pathways that it isn't just that you take the thing now it goes into your body now you have the thing it's that you know there's going to be a tree of if you have the right thing to combine it with it's going to react to this and then you have that thing so when you're trying to control five or six different reactions to make sure it ends up in the right place, you know, that's the science that takes a while and that you have to be careful with. I mean, one example is if a lot of people say, okay, for dopamine disorders, you want to go take a huge doses of, you know, B12 and you can't absorb B12 very well orally. So get the kind that stays under your tongue that sublingually goes directly into your blood. Well, you know, the two ways that you can get that are cyanocobalamin and methocobalamin because your body's going to take that and it's going to have a reaction to it. Now, if you're taking cyanocobalamin, the, which is the cheaper form that's going to be, you know, the store brand a lot of the time, then that is 
um, producing cyanide. <laughs> and the FDA would say, okay, well, that cyanide that it's making is beneath the level that would matter, so it's fine. But, you know, until I'm caught behind enemy lines, you know, I don't really want to eat cyanide personally. So I'm going to buy the methyl cobalamin. But, you know, how many people know this stuff or understand it? I mean, and that's one pathway for a relatively simple vitamin, you know. Oh, did yeah. we lose Jared? I think we lost Jared there, but I'll I'll segue off of that uh, to what we were initially talking about. Um, you know, the, it's true. Doctors uh, years ago would say vitamins and minerals don't work. They're just expensive urine, you know, and you yeah. can actually. See, see it it's way more I had my tell me that and i was like well my but man look my cholesterol changed and he was like wow well, yeah. um but what <laughs> what's what's different in our product is uh, most multivitamins take just a couple hours in manufacturing okay mm. put together our mineral blend just alone takes several days mm. and what we do is we we take the minerals and we make them so that they're organic in nature similar mm -hmm. to what you find in broccoli and mm -hmm. that's called chelation, and we have a special type of chelation. You can get chelated uh, products in the health food store. Usually, they're expensive yeah. because it's 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 hard. It takes a process to do. Can you but explain people, chelation, like the the, the go, difference go, in that? Go ahead, Jared. Yeah, I'll take a stab at that. So, there are natural chelators in nature, and what what, just scientifically, process, chemistry. What what is what is chelation? Yes. So chelators are are binding minerals. To stabilize them. In, in some chelators are very strong chelators. And so they bind minerals and deprive our body of them. You can bind it so strong that your body can't get it off of what you're using yes. to stabilize it. It's exactly like with, with the yard when you've got when you you know, if you do forestry, there's like sand will let the water be pulled out of the ground but it won't hold any water. So there's as soon as you dump the water on the plant, it's gone. Clay will hold water for 10 years, but the problem is the plant will hold it so well that the plants can't get it out. So you need this kind of blend of sand and clay in the middle in order to be stable enough. And that's, you know, the moving target that you guys are trying to hit for the most amount of people, the most amount of time. Good analogy. Right. Yeah. We, excellent. Yeah, we need a reversible chelation. Mm -hmm. So it's bound and delivered to the body and the natural chelators do that. Uh, there, there are multiple forms of natural chelators. You know, um, in in fruits we have uh, malic acid, we have citric acid, uh, we have other organic acids that can serve as chelators. Mm -hmm. And th there are, are natural chelators in soil as well, and and they help the body, or the the plant rather, uptake minerals. The the fungi are are you know, breaking down the rock form minerals into mm -hmm. forms that the plants can use. All of these natural chelators are quite complex. And we're just trying to recreate that the best we can with our proprietary uh, Nutritech chelation complex. Mm -hmm. We're creating for all of the minerals. Um, this is just a process for minerals, not vitamins. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're trying to bind the minerals so that uh, so they can be delivered. Um, more optimally to the body. That's the key for bioavailability, and it it's bulky. Mm -hmm. um, so you know the blinded trials were done using twelve capsules per day, mm -hmm. and the majority of that is is the bulk of macro minerals: calcium, phosphorus, magnesium. There's just not a way to make it small. We're delivering. Yeah, they, our bodies need them in gram amounts every mm -hmm. day, and so it takes quite a few capsules to deliver those. Uh, but they're effective. For example, magnesium has a lot of overlap in mechanisms, an astounding overlap in mechanisms with lithium. Mm -hmm. And lithium is used as a mood stabilizer and has been for decades in psychiatry. Mm -hmm. You know, we yeah. replace lithium entirely in most cases. In some cases, people use less than 20 milligrams of mm -hmm. lithium together with the daily essential nutrients it, and and i'm talking about psychiatrists it it it's useful lithium we have a, a very small amount of lithium in our product one milligram in those 12 capsules mm -hmm. that have been studied and that's about as much as people will get in food and water mm -hmm. each day we we have some lithium that we intake every day um and and there's some fascinating research about how that helps with mood stabilization so we're treating it as a trace mineral.
but magnesium seems to do the bulk of the job. Mm -hmm. Lithium in pharmacologic levels, as used in psychiatry, seems to be a poor substitute, mm -hmm. if I can say it that way, for the designed uh, action of magnesium. Mm -hmm. So as, as soon as we start giving the body the levels of magnesium that really take care of that mood stabilization in a more effective way, people feel like themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, with lithium, they don't. They, they, they have plenty of side effects. They feel uh, headaches and tremor, you know, different. It, it's difficult to find just the right level and, and to have them feel like themselves. Mm -hmm. um, with magnesium, with the full set of nutrients, I should say, including magnesium, um, we, it's critical to have a balance mm -hmm. of magnesium and calcium, uh, sodium, potassium. Our, our bodies are designed to have these nutrients from food and they're present in a natural balance you know there's a reasonable balance that soils and plants will throughout the world will give us in some places for example iodine is deficient in soil that needs to be supplemented somehow mm -hmm. or you know we need to <laughs> have foods from other areas where the iodine is not deficient mm -hmm. in order to avoid deficiency of iodine similar with selenium and with other trace minerals. So it, it helps to have a broad variety of foods in our diet mm -hmm. to meet all these needs. That's kind of, that's what we're doing with the nutrients. Mm -hmm. We're ensuring that the body has all of these nutrients mm -hmm. at recommended levels and it, it, they function. So that's the synergy aspect that you asked um, if we could address. Um, we, you know, you could think of the, the functions of the body working together um, like um, a dam yeah. holding back water you know it, when the dam leaks and breaks you know the, our level of function is lowered mm -hmm. in different ways um, you know and what we've done in in our research is look at the number of people who don't meet just the minimum requirements mm -hmm. to avoid deficiency disorders that's the the recommended dietary allowance mm -hmm. you know and and that's only good for 97 to 98 percent of individuals in theory mm -hmm. uh, they estimate an average need they uh, go up a couple of standard deviations and and in theory that will meet the needs of 97 to 98 percent of apparently healthy individuals mm -hmm. we believe from our experience we're working with the the tail of that bell curve so mm -hmm. people who are not meeting their needs even at rda levels yeah but the reality is not people many people are not even getting the rda levels mm -hmm. and so it's not just that two percent of people who are deficient in these nutrients and it's not just one nutrient they're deficient in they're, they're chronically low in these nutrients and so mm. it becomes really useful to use a supplement to top up these levels mm -hmm. the institute of medicine in creating these levels stated that the RDA would not be deemed sufficient to replete individuals previously undernourished. That's the situation we have mm -hmm. in our countries. We, we eat a lot of calories, but yeah. they're often nutrient poor calories, not nutrient dense. And so, you know, it, it's a slower process. We could, we could try to eat more nutrient dense foods to replete ourselves. And that's useful still, absolutely mm -hmm. useful. Uh, but it helps to top up these essential nutrients with a supplement. It happens more quickly from our mm -hmm. experience. And then people can manage with an improved diet mm -hmm. much more effectively. We, we find people's needs for the nutrients are variable depending on the nature of their diet, the nature of gut health, nature of genetics. Some people have a higher genetic need for certain nutrients, and that's reflected in what the Institute of Medicine uh, mm -hmm. displays as a bell curve of nutrient needs. Some people, you know, the majority of people need that average need that they estimate. And some people need higher than that. Mm -hmm. And so in a famine, some people will fare better than others. We, we've we seen this in real yeah. life. Uh, you know, in, in the Dutch famine, for example, uh, there were higher rates of uh, mental disorders mm -hmm. documented. It's It's well documented there. And who 
had those mental disorders, presumably those who are more genetically susceptible mm -hmm. or who have poor gut health. And of course, those who did not have quite as a good a diet, mm -hmm. but what they're eating may not have been quite as nutrient dense. Can you extrapolate a little bit, Jared, for those that are listening and might not understand what happened in Holland, World War II, and why that why that happened? Yeah, so I, I think it's a useful case study for what's happening um, in, in a larger way um, in our society. Uh, you know, we think of of a situation of famine, and and we think. You know that's that's extreme. Uh, none of us are starving, right? But we are starving for essential nutrients. That's mm -hmm. what many people don't realize. The calories, one sixth of total calories in the United States of America is from sugars. Mm -hmm. There are zero nutrients mm -hmm. in those refined sugars. Uh, so all of us immediately, that's one sixth of our total calories. Yeah. Um, more than that, not me. contributing to our nutrient needs, and then they're they're added fats. In addition to that, those those are very calorie dense and nutrient poor when they're refined. So what we really need is the whole food mm -hmm. with the nutrient dense uh, minerals and vitamins from those plants. Well, and um, we evolved to seek out things that contained salt, sugar, and fat, and then yes. you know, because of starvation and ice, and ice ages and droughts, where we needed to carry weight, and now we're in a position where, you know, we can just pull salt, sugar, and fat out of any vending machine, and all of a sudden, right. um, you know, what our what our what our body feels like it wants is not actually what it needs. And yes. to explain the complexity of what you guys are doing, it's like. You know, if, it, if the car is reliable, you know, human humanity is on every continent other than Antarctica. I mean, we're one of the most diverse um, in what we're able to, you know, as a species and what we're able to live through and live on and live around, you know. And so the genes are different globally because, you know, people live in different areas. And now, you know, we ha can get on airplanes all of a sudden. You know, it's not like you yes. can feed everyone in this one region. Like they evolved the same, you know, if somebody needs to be able to synthesize vitamin D and they're from Norway, their skin is a little bit lighter. If that's you yes. know, where the skin pool came from, than somebody who needed to protect against skin cancer and block out the sun and they have more melanin in their skin, you know, in the equatorial place, yes. you know, so there's all that together. And you're trying to say, okay, this works for the most people, the most of the time I'm suspicious of anybody that says their thing works for everybody all of the time. That's kind of, right. you catch the grip. <laughs> Um, and we, you're trying to, yes. to to make that work, but that is complicated because just because we're living and alive and whatever doesn't really mean we're getting what we need. I mean, like yes. you can take a Toyota Camry or a Geo Tracker and just you know beat the hell out of it and never change the belt and never change the oil and probably get 250,000 miles on it. You know, the radio doesn't work or whatever, but you can do that to the car and it's still going. But it, you know, it is the car as a person metaphor, like we don't feel good. We don't think clearly. Yeah. We're not in a good mood. We're not re achieving our potential. Right. Um, we're not treating our mental health. We're spending all this money on therapy. We're spending all this money on whiskey. We're spending <laughs> money on weed. Yes. You know, and then those have some secondary effects too that yes. we treat a top level symptom, but make the bottom level symptom worse. You know, right. Cause worse. It, and yeah, I, I love that. that so I much. love that analogy. So I, I wanted to go a step further with this. And talk about famine in our day. Mm -hmm. Glyphosate, Roundup in farming is just poured on crops. Yeah, glyosulfate. There's a, essentially there are studies where one you're, third you're, of a pound you're. of glyphosate runs into Lake Erie, for example, from every acre mm -hmm. in the Lake Erie watershed every year. It's it's poured onto the land on crops. And, and there's, it's well, sprayed we don't on even wheat. spot treat anymore. I mean, just so people yeah. are familiar with what this works, Roundup is gliosulfate, and gliosulfate is cancer for plants. What you were doing <laughs> is making cells mutate, just like cancer, to where there is no more, um, uh, what's it called? What's the little, there's no more telomere on the cell. And so it is just replicating until the plant kills itself with tumors. So that's how you kill plants, which we used to, you used to say, okay, well, if there's a little weed in your yard, you get the spray bottle and spray it on it. We don't do that anymore, okay? What we do now is we say we're going to grow Roundup Ready crops that Monsanto owns. There is a um, patent on that seed. 
So yeah. if you go and pick some of the seeds off that corn, you just wrote patent law because the Supreme Court has said that you can patent life now, which is kind of an insane thing. Um, and so this, they own that genetic structure. And yep. you Big cannot business. be a farmer and make any money unless you're growing this potato, this corn. So it's all the same thing that you're eating, right? And we don't spot treat weeds. What they do is they grow Roundup Ready plants whose DNA have been developed to resist this yep. poison that yep. causes plant cancer and then we pour it on all of it and you eat it <laughs> yes just because and, it was and, genetically resistant to the crap that's yes. our system I right mean, and people <laughs> sorry uh, sorry to interrupt <laughs> well, I've been people you guys a lot GMO, of like like non-gmo foods and that's a good thing in yeah. this situation you know um we we don't want and and what we really want though is is roundup free foods uh, because there are non-GMO crops that are also sprayed yeah. with Roundup right before harvest. Uh, mm -hmm. Fields of oats and wheat. And those are staple <laughs> crops. E even if we're trying to eat a, a good whole food diet, including those whole grains, mm -hmm. you know, we could be depriving ourselves of minerals in a significant way because glyphosate, the active ingredient there, is patented mineral chelator that's what it was first patented for it's very effective speaking with a plant pathologist uh, from purdue university who spent his career after world war ii researching the effects of these sprays on plants he made a very fascinating statement this is uh, dr don huber mm -hmm. and he, he's done some fascinating research and, and presented uh, some of this information about glyphosate mm -hmm. and its damaging effects um, much of that research is not his own, but he's compiled it and, and presented it. Um, he, he made a very interesting statement based on his personal career, his own career researching plants and the chemicals, the chemical effects on plants. He said, I don't know of any herbicide that's not a mineral chelator. Mm -hmm. That's an a incredibly mean, important statement in my mind. Too. Like it's not, it, it is, it isn't a, 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 it is not a pesticide that is not uptaken into the plant's system. Right, it is. So whether That's or not right. the plant dies of plant cancer doesn't mean it's not in there chelating things. And you're, you're saying, I was saying gliosulfate later, because I'm running into the problem that I had when I was like eight, where I was like reading above my reading level. So I'd say subtle because I was reading things that I hadn't heard people say, you know, <laughs> so I didn't know how to pronounce it. So, you know, you curl up with scientific journals by the fire. That's the other thing that, that makes me frustrated is the people who send me emails saying that I don't know how to read research, typically read less research than I read. <laughs> um, but uh, so I, I'm anyway, thank you for correcting me because I I've nope. read this stuff, but I, you know, there's not a ton of people that are willing to talk about it with me my wife yeah no problem Please, uh, the concept is what's really important and that yeah. is you know when when we're intaking the the sprays that are depleting us of minerals on a daily basis we have a famine we have a very real famine of minerals essential minerals that we need mm -hmm. and so that's in addition to food choices so we're already cutting out a lot of minerals by refined flour for example, um, by added sugars and fats in our foods. And, and we need these minerals for function. What we're finding is we're just getting to that threshold, like in the Dutch famine, where people can't handle such a low level of nutrition. That's what we seem to see. People we don't know what's making us sick. We think we need more pills. And, and, and it's not for even sure. like we need a supplement or something. We just need food. We need nutrients. Right. There's and we need all those nutrients in the cell. It's not like okay, well, you need hornet venom because you're low on whatever, <laughs> and you need. To, it's just like your body is designed to have a lot of micronutrients doing things in cell walls, in microglia, yeah. like yeah. in, in myelin, uh, in yes. your liver. And if you don't have that, you feel bad, and you keep being like, "Oh, I need to go to gym. I need to go to therapy. I need yes. to buy this product." And it's it's not that. It's just ground up. If you don't have. Yes. Yeah. This stuff in your body, you can't make cells work. Well, it's, it's what we're made out of. Like yeah. if you were to boil us down, you get a bunch of water and you'd have a little pile of what? What is Bad. that? And, you know, our body is made out of it. So if you give your body the ingredients that it's made out of, it has a map in it. And mm -hmm. it will, we find that it repairs itself over time. Mm -hmm. Like if you cut yourself, the body is going to send some white blood cells. It's going to mm -hmm. create a cell, right? It's good. It knows what to do, mm -hmm. but it, body needs the ingredients and mm -hmm. we're not 
I'm not anti pharma, but you know, uh, Abilify, our body, like that's not like what we're, if you boil it down, like that's not what it's made out of. And when you give your body what it's made out of, and it it, it starts to fix itself and start getting all these neural pathways going, the synapses start firing properly. It, it's a wonderful thing to see. Jared says they start feeling like themselves, normal. Yes. You know, it's yes. Yeah. People feel like they come out of a fog. Mm -hmm. They they have clarity of mind. Uh, they have stable mood. You know, they're, they're still, of course, the, the regular emotions that we feel. It doesn't blunt emotion uh, like people describe with medications, with psychiatric medications in many cases. But, you know, it, it, it's just great to, to have the option. You know, we're not anti-medication, but mm -hmm. many people choose to give the nutrients a try and, and even try them first mm -hmm. before medications. And, and we found that that's very useful. And, you know, so... Well, and then you're ready there. for therapy. You're ready for therapy when your brain is working. I mean, it's like yes. so much of the stuff that's environmental, I can't really change. And even brain-based yes. medicine, which is working on the brain's desire for, you know, the parasympathetic and sympathetic to resync and this, you know, to get trauma out of the subbrain. I mean, what's the thing that all the brain-based medicine practitioners tell you if you go do QEG brain mapping or neurostimulation or you go do brain spotting or you go do emotional transformation therapy is drink a lot of water. You know, increase neuroplasticity, get some rest, drink water, eat healthy yes. for the next 12 hours so that you're, you can actually build new neural net connections. Yes, yes. In that way, I'll, I'll go a step further here. So we, we've talked about vitamins and minerals, and it's pretty clear based on what's happened in a, in, on a large scale that we need minerals. We've seen that those are key. Mm -hmm. In therapy, we find amino acids enhance. Mm -hmm. the effects as well. So we, we try to provi provide a foundation of all the essential nutrients for human needs. And, and so we have the vitamins and minerals in our daily essential nutrients product. We add omega fatty acids mm -hmm. we, to ensure the brain has those. Those are essential. Um, and then we add amino acids, especially when there's healing to be done in the body. Mm -hmm. uh, when the body's expressing genes and needing to change receptors. That's all the work of amino acids. Uh, so what we've done is we've adopted another aspect of nature. We've tried to just go right straight to nature. And what we've done is we've combined free form amino acids, um, both the essential ones and the non-essential ones in the same ratios as in mother's milk. Mm -hmm. And the, the remarkable thing about this is when we did the research, mother's milk in, in Thailand and Japan and Europe and Africa is almost identical in amino acids, very little variation. It, it's, it's by design. It, it's, it's a level of amino acids for human needs. And so we just decided we can't find anything better than that. So we're giving that ratio of amino acids. Mm -hmm. in a pill and people use it for healing from concussions mm -hmm. healing from trauma and we rely on practitioners doing the work of therapy uh, to get those neurons connecting mm -hmm. just the nutrients by themselves in this case you could see are not enough we need to fire those neurons together and wire them together the firing happens with therapy and the, the wiring happens with the help of amino acids, mm -hmm. as well as vitamins and minerals and omega fatty acids. They all need to be there. We're not just choosing one among these. And that's key to the outcome. I don't, I don't want to take up, um, you know, y'all's whole uh, day with this. We really appreciate you sitting down and, and giving information, um, you know, that, that, uh, that helps people make a more informed decision about different things. But um, can you say anything about uh, microglia? Uh, have you looked at any of the, the newer research on the brain mechanisms that lo looks like maybe, you know, Alzheimer's and different things, why some of the things that work, work, and why some of the things that um, we will invent in the future might work better um, for brain health or, or like myelin in the brain, uh, anything with the, the neuroplasticity, are you familiar with those? Right. So, I'll just speak in more general terms here. The glial cells are providing support mm -hmm. for those neurons, nutritional support. And where is that coming from? Well, you need to have it in your body in the first place. Mm 
mm. and then those cells will function as they should. You know, we, we focus on neurons a lot, but there's a lot happening there. Um, you know, um, so I would just say in, in general terms, uh, we're just providing the raw materials. The body does its magic. Mm -hmm. It would be fascinating to see what changes mm -hmm. come in, in scanning studies, uh, in, you know, brain mapping. We have the QEG brain mapping clinic. We um, are looking in the future. I mean, I'm not anywhere where you can do it now, but um, Diana and Jay don't have the aversion to academia and publishing that I have. You know, they both have, you know, d dual degrees, PhD, whatever. And uh, so it, it may be something in the future we could we could start to look at, you know, does the we, change just with supplementation? Yes, we'd love to do that. We are open to uh, research Yeah, uh, with... Uh, our supplements and others, uh, you know, we, we've worked with clinics doing QEEG mm -hmm. and they find patterns that change mm -hmm. with the nutrients they, uh, so that they, they can find, they can identify patients uh, for whom the nutrients will work very well. Mm -hmm. And it's a broad set of patients <laughs> yeah. based, based on the patterns they're finding. The nutrients well, and it's not going to hurt, you know, it's not, it. it's not going to hurt them. You know, there's not a doubt. If you try it and it doesn't help you, then you stop yes. taking it. I mean, it's not like you're going to withdraw. Yeah. It's not, there's, there's not a, a huge downside. Um, and you know, it's expensive nutrients, but there's not a, a giant initial investment, you know, like there are with some of these okay. other things. And right. you, know, you guys were talking about people who are able to go in and then, you know, tear down off of, you know, some mood stabilizers and antipsychotics, you know, or, um, you know, mood stabilizers and um, um, antidepressants. But it's like, how much of that is just a total misdiagnosis anyway, that you're skipping when somebody's coming to treat it that way, instead of going through the doctor, getting on the drug, doing this. I mean, how much of it isn't even the nutrition as much as that you didn't have? Because I mean, like when I was first starting out, the, um, you know, we have kind of a pretty specific referral pathway now. But when I was first starting out, I'd get referrals from psychiatrists that are like, this person's on a horse dose of antidepressant it's an 80 pound woman i can't put her on anymore you know i mean this is kind of hyperbole obviously they're not a you know horse dose medication but they're like i can't raise the um you know sedative anymore so you need to go to a therapist for anxiety well what goes on in your house what's your routine look like well my husband beats me okay well i'm not going to do zen meditation while you're experiencing domestic abuse we can talk about why you're, uh, you don't feel like you can get out of this situation or you don't think you deserve to, or we can talk about practically what you can do. And, you know, we have referrals for different things to support you and education about the cycle alliance, all this stuff, right? That is the right way to go. And we're medicating that because somebody said, are you anxious? Right. Check. Is the anxiety show up this way? Right. Check. All right. DSM-5 definition met. Moving on. Like yeah. the environment is, the, the, which I mean, the DSM says you should check the environment, but they don't do it, um, you know. And yes. And we're I'm so not, quick to medicate that person who goes, things. yeah, you know, you're, you're looking at um, all the things that the doctor is not checking for, like what's going on with their body, yes. what's going on there. Um, yes. So a lot so of this, so anyway, short version is a ton of people on these yes. medications. It's not appropriate for them or they don't even need it. They just need to talk to somebody. We do medication first and therapy later if you run out, of, if the medication doesn't work. Half the people that go to effective therapy need less or they don't need the medication. We've, we've had to create a support center over the years, uh, kind of like a call center, and teach uh, staff to, to talk a, about a few things to help them along. Mm -hmm. um, and the other side of our business is scientists like Jared, uh, Taryn, and Dallin. They teach doctors. So doctors will come in and they'll ask their questions. We'll consult with them. We have modules that, that we just teach the ABC principles that we've learned over the last 23 years. They're not difficult. But they're not taught in universities. They just they just aren't, at least to the extent that we teach them. But we have wellness advisors if their people aren't working with their doctor and just want to talk with uh, people, ask questions, and we we have people we encourage people to call in and, and uh, find out. Everyone's a little bit different, okay, and uh, you know if it's amazing what nutrition can do. But it's also amazing what stops nutrition from working, you know? So we talk a little bit about those principles. Yes. Yeah. There actually are, you know, Corey mentions that these things have not been covered. There's very little nutrition instruction mm -hmm. uh, for medical doctors, for example. Because um, it's not patentable. And the person right. who's teaching them doesn't know it, and they're taught by right. going into a hospital. And, I mean, when right. part of when I was in outpatient social work and we're 
uh, assertive community treatment team. So we got the worst, the worst cases of people in the state that were actively psychotic and going to ERs all the time. And we we're trying to engage them, you know, um, like part of my job at that point was to have medical students in my car for part of their residency to teach or not residency. What, what there's part of their, when they're students to teach them, that was part of their psych rotation. And they liked it because the psych rotation in the ER is kind of boring, but that was like, so many were like, why don't they teach me this in the hospital? Or I can't wait to get out of the hospital so I can learn the way that other things do it. Cause we, we don't think about how much of their school that it's, we think it's all textbook and tests and they come out and they know everything. I mean, a lot of it is just following another doctor around garbage in garbage out, you know, like if the doctor from 1980 wasn't trained well and isn't doing a good job and then you put a student with them and tell the student to follow them around, what are they learning? You know? And I mean, right. really all the students that were bright and fun, they understood these systems. We had these conversations while they're in my car and they were like, how do you know this stuff and where did you learn it? And I could give them different resources, but they're medical students, you know, nearing the end of their thing. <laughs> talking to a social worker that's been out of school for an hour and, and you know, is has enough obsession to read the app all night long instead of sleeping. Like what what is our system? Right. Yeah. There so it's it's changing. Uh, there there are many psychiatrists we've trained over the years, uh, primary care doctors, nurse practitioners. Uh, as well as therapists of many kinds. And we're grateful for all of them. They come with a wealth of knowledge, right? And they can apply that knowledge in the case of medications in a critical way, for example. They, they're not trained to take people off medications <laughs> nearly like they're trained to put them on medications. Um, we'll just talk to them they first. Do it. I don't know if they need the medication. We don't even do that anymore. It's like right. we shifted medicine to billable services, which and so with psychiatry, the free market is frustrated because it's like, where's the service? You're not doing an operation. Right. So it's, you know, we talk to you for anywhere from five to 15 minutes and then put you on a pill. That is not enough time. You don't know me. You don't know right. what's going on. You know what right. I wanted you to know. You know, you don't yes, know if I'm I, smart enough to trick you. You don't know <laughs> if I feel like I'm not allowed to say this stuff because of the household I came from. You don't know if my self-image is lining up with my actual. You don't know any of this stuff. Right. You know, and it, the screener about domestic abuse and do I fall in my house and all the stuff that you your liability management team made me do. I spend more time right. doing that than I do list, talking to a doctor and the doctors right. don't read that stuff. The CRA right. is supposed to go through it and see if maybe I'm getting abused. They don't. You know, <laughs> right. If there's anything that's appropriate in, in, in with that approach, from our perspective, it's nutrients, because everyone needs these essential nutrients. And you can talk with a person for 10 or 15 minutes and say, I wonder if you're needing some more essential nutrients. Let's try that. It, it won't hurt. You know, uh, in the case of using them together with medications, it needs to be carefully monitored because there are medication effects that can increase over medication. Are there any contraindications? Like I'm not a medical doctor, so nothing I'm saying is medical advice. Right. You guys right. have different training, but you're not acting as, as MDs on here, you know, but right. like if I'm on, you know, blood thinners, whatever, I, can yes. I just go grab a hearty product? Do I need to know anything um, about you, contraindications? You do. And we recommend that people work, if they're taking any prescription medication, that they work with a prescribing clinician in the process. And we have a map we've created. We've, we've worked with, um, trained many prescribing clinicians. And those who are accepting patients uh, may choose to uh, list their practice on our website. And uh, we have a find a locator, I uh, find a, a health professional uh, locator. And it, it, it includes therapists of many kinds, uh, nurse practitioners, uh, medical doctors, psychiatrists. And, you know, a person can search for what they're looking for in a practitioner. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, they, they, they need to go through um, individually with a practitioner to assess their needs. Like it, it, it really is, it's more than just throw the essential nutrients at people and we get a clear, consistent response with everybody. Uh, with many people, especially when they're unmedicated. If they try it first before they use medications, it's a much simpler road. Mm -hmm. um, and, and many people have, are, are very pleased with the results. Sometimes it requires some extra expertise. Uh, you mentioned L-theanine, um, N-acetylcysteine mm -hmm. might be useful. 
um, and other things. Uh, we, we're well, a lot of people they want the product that has the ECCG in it, but the pure green tea extract has a lot of caffeine. You know, yes. and the best way to come off of Adderall is not to just take a ton of caffeine. Now, you know, L-theanine right. is able to stimulate focus without yes. being a stimulant. Excellent. Um, yeah, and we, you know, this is a good point. Even even substances like caffeine, uh, marijuana, um, nicotine we've seen significant interactions with. And so it, it, an individual doing this on their own um, can get uh, interference effects from mm-hmm. these things. So the good news here is people who are drinking multiple cups of coffee, coffee or, or tea a day for the caffeine effect to keep themselves energized, find over time they don't need to use as much. That's what we've observed. We actually have a blinded trial a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial with cigarette cessation Hmm. using daily essential nutrients. This was done in New Zealand. They found the most robust effect of the trial was they smoked less over time. Hmm. And the initial observation was not just cigarettes, but marijuana as well. Uh, People would spontaneously just lower the amount they were using. But you're just falling asleep naturally. You know, why why reach for your whatever you're reaching for? Yeah. And oh. so the good news is people tend not to feel the need as much mm-hmm. for these substances over time as they use nutrients. Um, probably changes. They, they feel good. You, you have any evidence uh, from any of the studies you've done that it changes the GABA? Hmm. Interesting. Well, that's that's interesting. We, we we don't have that specifically. That would be my guess. We're changing that's probably why it changes the effect of the medication as well, or it changes the effect of marijuana use or something as well as. The yes, we see plenty of evidence that it would be effective mm-hmm. um, if we were to study that specifically. And you know, we, we we're not like a pharmaceutical company. Yeah. With millions of dollars, um, billions of dollars to to pour into. Uh, this research. And and we're not really interested in doing that. We want an independent investigation. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that's a, like, we're so obsessed with like the, um, the quality of the study internally, but we don't look at the external system, which is real frustrating to me. I mean, it's like, yeah, they were incredibly, um, the research design was flawless and what, um, uh, these cigarette companies used for 20 years to prove that we really just can't figure out if there's any link between cigarettes and cancer. I mean, that research was so high quality. Right. Some of the, the best PhDs in the world are on that stuff. Sure. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. For but, some reason, you know, couldn't... Uh... The good news here is yeah. we, we have medications that we're replacing with nutrients, mm-hmm. uh, gamma urging medications, right? And And so we have strong evidence from our perspective uh, you know, if, if you're to consult with psychiatrists who mm-hmm. have used this for many years, they would say there's strong evidence mm-hmm. that we're affecting GABA. What does what do nutrients not affect in the body? Yeah, that's the real question. It, 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 it's nothing. Everything is affected by nutrients, and that's a, a huge difference between a, a magic bullet approach of a medication. Even a few different medications used together, mm-hmm. um, they're only they're very limited. Uh, mechanisms of action involved Mm -hmm. with nutrients there are a multitude of mechanisms known and many really sparsely known vitamin k has receptors in the brain Mm -hmm. you you mentioned a blood clotting medication that's an an interaction that could happen with blood clotting medications vitamin k could be involved okay we have vitamin k in our product so it's not a good idea just to add the nutrients and curcumin is another one you don't really want to take with the blood. Pressure. Right, right. So these things need to be carefully monitored. Milk thistle can also make your uh, medication, you know, anywhere from four to twelve times more effective if that's one that it slows down the liver processing of, which is not people get in trouble. Yes, with. that that is a major interaction. So Corey went through the pharmacodynamic interaction where the nutrients are used in the body we're, we're building the the base of nutrients and more serotonin is produced and it's mm-hmm. regulated better more dopamine is produced it's regulated better and and all of those functions require nutrients in addition to that the lever the liver enzymes and intestinal enzymes uh, cytochrome p450 enzymes mm-hmm. are a major 
source of interactions with medications. Mm-hmm. We, we speak with medical doctors all the time. This catches their attention. Mm-hmm. They know they need to monitor medication levels when they learn. And many of them have not, don't have it on their radar, at least, that the synergy effect of these nutrients used together is known to affect medications, even taking nutrients separately, uh, considering them separately. Vitamin D inhibits nine different cytochrome P450 enzymes that we've found in the literature. Mm. And it includes all of the major ones, CYP3A4, CYP2D6. And when you look at interaction checkers, vitamin D is listed as a moderate or a major interaction effect with Mm -hmm. different medications involving cytochrome P450, 3A4. That's the most common one used to process medications in the body. Mm -hmm. It's and 2D6. These enzymes are actually naturally used for vitamin D itself. That some of them are called vitamin D3 hydroxylase. That's the name of the enzyme. (laughs) It's used for vitamin D in the body. Uh, But the medications come along and the body uses the same enzyme. Mm-hmm. So what's, it's a competitive effect. Uh, the body can't clear the medication as quickly because vitamin D is there. Mm-hmm. Now you think of the implications here seasonally. Many people in the United States have vitamin D produced in the skin if they're outside. Many people are not. But if they're outside, they can have a lot more vitamin D in the summertime mm-hmm. than in the wintertime. Mm-hmm. They might be over-medicated in the summertime because the vitamin D is blocking the excretion of medications, metabolism. Mm -hmm. So the medication builds up in their bloodstream. People say eventually after a few days out in the sun, they say, I don't feel well in the sun. Mm -hmm. They think there's something with the sun. Well, I think this might be a mechanism involved. Vitamin D is increasing and it's increasing the side effects of medications. As a result, more medication is being kept in the body. Mm -hmm. It's not able to be processed and excreted. And so in the wintertime, the opposite could happen, Mm -hmm. right? Vitamin D levels are low. Person might be lacking medication. They might feel more depressed Mm -hmm. on their antidepressant in the wintertime when they're not producing as much vitamin D. So you have these fluctuations. I think those are very real. Mm -hmm. And a person can, can smooth those out by supplementing with vitamin D and keeping a more constant level throughout the year. Um, but the good news is uh, they could also achieve the ideal mm-hmm. mark experience in well in a lot of the natural traditions oh, I'm sorry go ahead there's kind of there's kind of a gradually drug. lowering the medication over time with the help of a prescribing clinician mm-hmm. right and and eventually what we find is the optimal dose of medication is zero yeah well and you know, like a, there's a million examples but if you go through kind of um older, you know, ancient world traditions, a ton of this stuff was just naturally figuring out how to um, manage these things. A lot of food culture is around that, you know. Um, it was relatively modern, you know, that they started to make sauerkraut so that people didn't get scurvy on uh, boats because you could keep sauerkraut, but you couldn't really keep citrus fruits. Right. But, I mean, even going back, like, the ancient Vikings, I mean, you drink mead in the wintertime, um, and the mead there is different than what we're making now. When you use honey must and a lot of the natural stuff, you end up with vitamin K and vitamin D and probiotics that you're not getting as much sun, you know, in the in the winter because it's cold. And, and to survive in Norway, you got to be in the mead hall or you know the tent with a fire. Um, whereas in the summer, you're out on the on the ocean. So, you know, a ton of those things are just. The society left alone, you know, naturally figures out how to kind of regulate itself and and comes up with ways to to make these things tradition, even if we don't know why. Um, But a lot of how we sort of are failing to have a um, a myth or guiding principle or any sort of, you know, cultural center in the modern world, uh, we lose all that stuff. And then we don't know why we feel bad. And you guys are part of the project of trying to rebuild those things. And, And money makes it difficult. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's um, the problem. Yeah, if, if you look, you talk about citrus and scurvy on the boats. A lot of people have heard about that. How long do you think it took them to mandate that? Over a hundred years mm-hmm. since they first, first found it out. So sometimes things are a little bit slow. Yeah. And, but there, we talk a lot about science stuff here, but there's so much stuff beyond the 
you know, the metabolism and all the vitamins and the lithium, whatever it is, you got the mom that's sick and tired of going to the principal's office because her mm -hmm. kids can't can't be handled in school, right? Mm -hmm. And then the mom decides to try this, and a month or two later, you know, some things really start changing, and the kid doesn't visit the principal's office anymore, you know. And we've been doing this for 23 years. We got just about 40 medical journal publications, 40 of them. And uh, the evidence is pretty clear, at least to me, that if you give your body what it needs, that it will it will repair itself. Nutrition isn't the fast train, but it's, it's the right track uh, to, to be on. And and we would suggest that give it a try first. If you're if you're one if something needs to happen, uh, either medications or you need to change some things, give give uh, nutrition a try first, yeah. and see, see if it'll it'll help. Um, there are circumstances where people do uh, still need a little bit of medications to keep them stable. Okay, mm -hmm. we're not anti pharma, but we we understand a little bit what's happening in the body. And it, uh, we really thank you for your time today to kind of get into these nuts and bolts of things, Joel. It's been really good. Yeah, we really appreciate you guys' this time. Um, I um, thank you for having me, and we'll definitely put anything that you would like in the show notes. We'll link to your website, which is um, what, Hardy dot com. What, 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 what is it? Hardynutritionals.com. dot com. Hardy Nutritionals dot com or okay. get Hardy dot com. Okay. Yeah. I'll, we'll link to that. And, um, you know, if anyone has any questions, I'll just let them, you know, reach out to you guys. Um, it's, it's not a product that you can get through Taproot um, right now. So, you know, um, you know, reach out if you have a question. Thank you so much for your time, guys.